Okay, the way we're going to do the notes today is sort of by time-wise, as far as like May 1775, we're going to go with the, the dates until we get up to the Civil, or to the Revolutionary War. Do that later. Okay. Alright, so after Lexington and Concord, we continue to have some battles and some fighting going on. And the first part we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about May of 1775. So if you're on 176 and you follow along in the reading, you'll be able to uh, do some good discussing. Okay. So we've got Lexington and Concord. Um, the colonies throughout were starting to train their soldiers, train militiamen. And eventually we got to numbers at about 20,000 militiamen. So uh, the British, who were in, uh, being, uh, their general was General Gage, decided to kind of keep his soldiers around Boston. Uh, there's a peninsula near Boston, and that's where he kept them because it's uh, a peninsula. Tell me what a peninsula is, Bromley. It's a, uh, it's a piece of land that has three sides of it. It's surrounded by Right, land surrounded by water almost completely just about. So you've got this, that's where he's got his soldiers. Why do you think it's probably a good idea for him to keep his soldiers on this peninsula, Zach? Because they have to come in one way and that land, and it would be hard to get up. Yep, so it was pretty difficult for the colonists to attack them where they were on this peninsula. Okay, so... The date specifically would be May 10th of 1775, and the Americans, colonists, and now they're starting to reference themselves as Americans, uh, they attacked a British fort. And which British fort did they attack? Drake? Ticonderoga. Ticonderoga. All right. So they attacked Britain's ty uh, fort Ticonderoga, which was um, in New York. Uh, near Lake Champlain. And who led the colonists in this attack on the fort? What was the name of the guy, PJ? Ethan Allen. Ethan Allen. And his, his group of people that, that went through and did the attack were known as the Green Mountain Boys. All right. And here at the uh, fort, when they attacked, what did they accomplish? Did they accomplish anything? Or did they lose? Did they win? What was their accomplishment? Garrett? Uh, they captured the fort and a large supply of light for the rain. Yes. So they were able to capture the fort. They accomplished this. They captured the fort and they captured the artillery there. All right. We will use artillery a lot the rest of the year, the word artillery. What is artillery? Noah? Big cannon. So it's your big, it, I mean, big guns. It's not ammo necessary. It's not ammo. Okay, artillery are the large weapons, the cannons and the bigger weapons, okay? It's not your smaller muskets and guns. Drew? It's used to take out smaller moving units or other artillery. Very good. And eventually, later on, they're going to use these, ar this artillery that they got uh, for an attack on Boston that they do a little bit later. So here's uh, Ticonderoga right over here. And here would be kind of what the fort looked like. So they attacked this. They captured the fort. They were able to capture the artillery there. Um, now, we, if you remember, back in uh, September at the First Continental Congress, they said to each other, okay, we need to get back together and we need to meet again because we need to decide what we're going to do then. Before we talk about their next meeting, at the First Continental Congress, what did the colonists vote on to do? Drew? Train their soldiers. Train their soldiers was one. Gary, give me the other. Uh, and then stop the training between British and British. Right. And then they said, okay, we'll hook back up a little later. Well, fighting had begun since then, and fighting had been going on since then. And so they met in May 1775. They started meeting on May 10th. That was the first day of their meeting. Well, the first Continental Congress was called the First Continental Congress. What was this meeting called? Pretty easy. It's the second one. Drake, what do you think they called it? You got it. Second Continental Congress. So we've got this meeting, uh, their second meeting in Congress. They, get, they, they again met in Philadelphia. They've got their delegates from all of the colonies, again, except for Georgia. And some of the delegates are some famous people that will, uh, will eventually be famous or famous to us. You've got John Adams, who will become president. You've got Samuel Adams, the leader of uh, 
Sons of Liberty, John Hancock, signer of the Constitution, Ben Franklin, George Washington, Patrick Henry, they all were among some of the delegates there. So here at the Second Continental Congress, they agreed and voted on some other things to do. And what did they agree here to do? What were some things they agreed to do? Drake, give me one. Form the Continental Army. They said, it's time for us to form a Continental Army. Before they just had their militiamen, they're just kind of civilians and so on. Now we've got, we're going to form a Continental Army. And, well, when you have a Continental Army, you need to put someone in charge and be the general of the army. And who did they choose? And pretty much unanimously, who did they choose to, to be the commander, the commander-in-chief? Ethan? George Washington. George Washington. Now, he's not going to know what he got himself into, and he's going to be wonder questioning himself here pretty soon about what he got himself into. But George Washington uh, is who they decided. He's from Virginia. He served as an officer in the British with the British during the French and Indian War. Um... So they were pretty happy with the choosing of him. Uh, what else, Garrett? Uh, they decided to make uh, a form of money, which would be paper money, to pay the troops. Yes, they knew they had to pay these troops. So since they had no money of their own, they decided it was time for them to start printing uh, paper money so they could pay the troops. This right here is their first form of acting as a government their own government. Okay, they formed an army. Governments have that. They're printing money. They have a commander-in-chief. So it's their first form of government. Garrett? Um, so would you go as far to say Washington is the first person to start the debt of America? <laughs> Not just Washington, but Not the other guys. But Got so John Adams and Sam Adams. The colonists, they started our debt. Congress, there right? you go. Our original Congress. First debt. Congress. Yeah, good. So George Washington, um, when he became commander-in-chief, when they asked him to do this, when I say commander-in-chief, I mean that's the leader of the army, that's what they call that person, he wasn't sure he wanted to do this. But everybody said, it's important that you do this, we think you're great, you'd be an ex ex excellent leader. Uh, he questioned his own abilities. He didn't know if he could do this. He said, I'll do it, but you know, I'm not sure if I am the best person for this. Everybody else felt he was, so... He questioned himself, um, but obviously we all know that he does an excellent job and will lead the country pretty good, too. So, again, he did question himself about whether or not he wanted to do this. So in May, we've got uh, the attack Fort Ticonderoga, captured that. We've got Second Continental Congress starts to meet. Still fighting is going on, okay? Um, now we move to June. So it's just a month later, and I'm sure the Continental Congress is still meeting at this time because it doesn't take, like, a day to decide, let's have a Continental Army and let's make George Washington. It wasn't a day, okay? It took quite a bit of time. So while they're meeting, we've got, we're in June, and in Boston is where the British are kind of hanging out. Colonists are starting to work their way there as well, and tension in the Boston area is building up. And so we have a battle going on in, in this area, and what's the battle? We talked about it yesterday, Dylan. Bunker Hill. It's the Battle of Bunker Hill. Battle of Bunker Hill and uh, also Breed's Hill, which is near Charlestown, both of them. And both sides had fortifications, which are forts, okay. Um, and the British decided they wanted to attack these forts, all right. So how did General Howe decided, okay, we're going to cross the bay, we're going to attack their forts. How many soldiers did General Howe, how many British soldiers did he take with him? Dustin? Um, 2,000. Yeah, over 2,000. So if you see Bunker Hill breeds hill, they're hills, they're, you know, they're on top, they can oversee. So you've got the colonists that are on top of the hill waiting and seeing them come. So they know they're coming. And according to legend, Colonel William Prescott ordered the colonists what? What did he order his colonists to do, Garrett? Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Well, if you hear, if someone said that to you, what would that tell you? What would, what would that mean, Zach? Just tell them to don't fire unless they sort of attack first. Well, n not necessarily. PJ? Don't fire until you're close enough to see the details of the face. Yeah, don't fire until they are smack dab close. So we're, you know, 
Jordan is. I can kind of see the whites of her eyes, but I'm sure he wanted them to get a little closer. Don't fire when you see them coming way over there by the restaurant. Wait till they get closer. Don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. So as soon as the um, British got close, the colonists just unleashed and just fired at them. The British fell back at first, but then they charged again. And what did they force the colonists to do? Ethan? Uh, get off, get off the hill. Pretty much, and what term do we use? You know the term? Cameron? Retreat. Retreat. So the British win this. Now, even though the British won this battle, they won at a tremendous cost, meaning they did lose some things. And do you have a question, or do you want to share no, with No, I thought you were going to have a question. I do. What, what was um, their loss? Go ahead. A thousand uh, soldiers were killed or wounded. Yes, they had a thousand casualties. A casualty is not always a death. Casualty could be injured, missing in action, or dead. So they had uh, more than a thousand casualties. Compared to the colonists, what? Dustin? 400. 400 casualties. Okay. Um, but it shows you that the colonists were able to hold their own against the best army in the world. Okay, now I want, up here is your U.S. map. This is where Ma Massachusetts and Boston is in the red. Okay, here's a detailed map of Massachusetts. Boston is right here. Okay, and close up here is that peninsula that the British were hanging out on, Reed's Hill, Bunker Hill. Those are the two forts. Okay, I want to show you a video clip on Bunker Hill.
the British.